letting you guys know that there will be spoilers in this video. So that means if you guys do not want to see spoilers for Honkai Star Rail's 2.2 storyline, then click off this video and you can watch my other videos. Other than that, let us get started. This is your first and only warning, by the way. Bye, guys. Subscribe to Mr. Eclipse. Welcome, and welcome back to another episode on the Mystery Eclipse channel, where today, we're gonna be playing Honkai Star Rail, that is right, and for the, today's episode of, well, a long-form content episode that you guys are seeing right now on the bar of your screen, we're gonna be doing 2.2 Panacani Story Quest. Yeah, that's right. You know, I was gonna do this on my off time, and whatnot, as I usually do with most games, but I'm like... Why not just do it on camera? I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. So, yep, that's what we're going to be doing in today's episode of Honka Star Rail, and I hope you guys enjoy. Sub, subscribe, or something like that. I don't know. Okay, let's just get started. For those who have been caught up with the 2.2 story quest, um, okay, uh, let me recap. Uh, um, arrive in Penacani, right? Yes, we we go around. We, we we do this murder mystery thing. All right, we meet this woman, a uh, girl named uh, Firefly. We uh, secretly have a crush on her. Okay, but next thing you know, boom, murdered. Next thing you know, another person gets murdered. Boom, murder mystery. Next thing you know, a gambler comes out of nowhere. Who's from the uh, govern the um, IPC, aka the people who find you if you don't do your taxes. Next thing you know, he's kind of like trying to. To rain down chips on us, and, and and next thing you know, a big titty goth lady that you see on the screen here just slashes them, and that's it. Now we're here, and it turns out she was at uh, Firefly is alive, and now we're gonna do this story. Let's go. I'm really sorry for waiting until now to tell you everything. Two reasons. Firstly. The script. In the future that Elio saw, Sam and the Astral Express's confrontation was inevitable. I tried to break the shackles of the prophecy, but this is as far as I could go. That aside, there were also my personal motives. I wished to travel with you as Firefly. Yes. And not Sam. Yes. It's alright, I didn't take it personally. Thank you. Do the Stellaron Hunters also want a piece of the legacy? Elio only gave me one instruction. Allow the Astral Express to pursue the Grand Legacy. It means that the Watchmaker's legacy holds great significance to trailblazing. And to you. Elio's scripts used to revolve and expand around certain specific Stellarons. But with your appearance... Do you still remember that medical cabin I told you about? Well... That's Sam. It belongs to the Iron Cavalry of Glamoth's Firmament Frontline. A Firefly Type 4 Tactical Heavy Assault Mech. Mm -hmm. It is the cradle of my vitality. And the meaning of my birth. And for the longest time it was... <laughs> how I should have looked to the rest of the world. The time scale of Dreamflux Reef differs from reality, so we mustn't lower our guard. You're sensitive to Memoria. A slight misstep, and you could get lost in this memory zone. Damn. Hi, Welt. Regarding Firefly and the crew. Before we found you, she'd already revealed her Stellaron Hunter identity and shared a lot of information. Who would have thought that the Molten Knight's true identity was actually a young girl? For her, this is a secret that she cannot allow others to know. That being the case, I think we can believe she's willing to cooperate. But she didn't reveal all her secrets. I just 
can't shake the feeling that her situation is different from that of the typical dreamer. And I hope that doesn't lead to any dangerous predicaments. I hope you've regained a little composure. We'll move out when you're ready. This is kind of creepy down here. All right, let's go. Unbelievable. To think there's a settlement of this size within the dreamscape. And all beyond the family's reach. The atmosphere in this fortress is uh, pretty different from that in the beautiful dream. When I first saw it, I was in awe too. The sky here, it's like a reflection of the 12 dreamscapes. What's even more bizarre is that this place is also separated into trade and residential areas. The layout may be simple, but the facilities are very comprehensive. It seems that there are quite a number of people living here. Hmm. Though both dreamscapes have distinct styles, the architectural designs are quite similar. Works of the same hand, perhaps. Hard not to speculate on the connection. But there's no point in overthinking things. Let's meet up with Himako and the others first. Take a right turn at the end of this road and you'll reach the Trade District. There are more people there. And perhaps someone knows where she is. Not coming with us? The Astral Express likely needs room for some internal deliberation. In the meantime, I'll try and locate Gallagher. Sure. Let's reconnect later. Letting her go was the right decision. Further observations are needed before we decide whether to trust her. But first, there is someone I need to talk to. Let's go. I'm sure you've already noticed that him. That Misha? He's right over there. The Reverie Hotel's bellboy. How did he end up here? And right after Miss Acheron severed the beautiful dream. We'd better check, just to be sure. What's Misha doing here? What's Misha doing here? Also, yes, this is my first ever episode of Honkai Star Rail. No, I know. I know I didn't show you guys me doing the Bellabog quest, and I know I didn't show you guys me doing the Shansho quest either. I just did it on my own time. I just wanted to play the game. But now I decided, why not? Here we go. Huh? You were the guest from before. <laughs> we meet again! And a new friend. Uh, uh, forgot to introduce myself. I'm the hotel's bellboy, Misha. Hello, Misha. I'm Welt. We met in a dream. Oh. And who might this be? Tick tock! Old friend and new friend! Let's high five! Your. Uh, memory zone meme? Nope. Clocky is a good friend of mine. We all live here. How did you two get here? This dreamscape isn't supposed to be open to the public. I wonder if it has something to do with Sleepy. So this is your home? Yep. After my work in the beautiful dream ends, I'll go back home. Commuting used to be more convenient, but... Ever since travel became cumbersome, Sleepy started ferrying people back and forth between the two dreamscapes. This... Sleepy... Can you describe what it looks like? Sleepy is a memory zone meme. Looks fierce and has many eyes. But it's actually really well behaved. Gallagher's been taking care of it. This... description... could it be? Based on the description, that meme is indisputably death. A nightmare for the family, but for the people who live here, well, that couldn't be further from the truth. D death Not in a dream, surely. Sleepy's just a little aggressive, and sometimes messes up by fetching the wrong guess. But it would never hurt anyone! I see. Has it brought back any guests recently, say, in the last day or two? 
we're currently investigating a missing person case that occurred within the beautiful dream. I see. Then you'll have to speak with Gallagher. But he's currently busy hosting a visitor from the Oak family, and specifically asked not to be disturbed. Um, Mr. Yang, the person you're looking for, is it Miss Robin? Mm, just as I thought. Considering what happened with Miss Firefly, this doesn't come as a surprise. If you're looking for Miss Robin, I can lead the way. She told me that she'd be willing to meet with outside guests. If it's not too much trouble. Also, we're looking for our missing companions. Um, a woman with red hair accompanied by a girl with pink hair. Have you seen them? Oh, I... I haven't. But please, rest assured. Dream Flux Reef is a small place, and it's not as bustling as the beautiful dream, but its safety is unmatched. Uh, how about this? Since it's your first time here in Dream Flux Reef, I'll be your guide and help you find your companions. And then we can all go visit Miss Robin together. She's gone to Mrs. Grace's to visit the children. She won't be leaving anytime soon, so there should be enough time. All right then, we'll uh, follow your plan. Well, we now know the answer to both murder cases that have caused such commotion in Penacone. As for the intentions of the mastermind behind it all, we are still none the wiser. That visitor from the Oak family is worth learning about. Yes, and I believe their relationship with Gallagher may run deep. Say, you mentioned before that you saw Clocky that only you could see, right? You also saw him, Mr. Yang. I can't shake off this strange feeling. Am I really still so young at heart? Lamau. Old. Honestly, a lot of old people are young at heart, honestly. I mean, I live with grandparents, and they're both kind of young at heart, to be honest, and it's pretty funny to watch them, like, have fun in the kitchen and whatnot. Forget it. <laughs> it's not important. Uh, we'd better just follow Misha. Everyone, look! From here? You can see the most spectacular view of Dreamflux Reef. A black hole? No. An accretion disk formed from consolidated memoria? Was Dreamflux Reef built on such unstable memoria? Oh, so Mr. Yang is also versed in memoria dynamics. I was just trying to figure out how to explain this huge hole to everyone. I bet you guys have a lot in common with Miss Kami. Wait a minute. I could talk to her, but there's like a chest right over there. How could I not pass, pass up this opportunity? Okay, now let's talk to this woman. Hey look, there's March 7th. Finally. <sighs> Let me go! Ghost! There's a ghost! Don't come near me! Oh my, I'm human and so are you. Can you get a grip? Uh, Mr. Yang and Mr. Trailblazer, I've been waiting for you. Quickly, come help! I bumped into a member of the family on the way here. He was so scared, and I just wanted to calm him down. But... Let me go, let me go! I've only done good in my life. Why can't I rest in peace after death? Well, this is how it turned out. You scared him this badly? <laughs> ha ha, you're a regular comedian. He thinks he's dead. Although, when I first fell in, I also thought the same. Dear guest, this is not the afterlife. This is Dreamflux Reef. That's right. Did you hear that? Repeat after me. Dreamflux Reef. You... You're talking to someone invisible. If I'm not dead, what am I? <laughs> I shouldn't have pushed my luck and tried sleeping in my dream. Curiosity kills a papushi. What's wrong with sleeping in dreams? Stop asking! You'll alert the monsters! All the dead are right here. All of them! Uh, you're not talking about the memory zone meme, are you? <sighs> Don't say that name! It's all your fault. They're coming! 
Oh, hi. Okay, give it a second. He passed out. His intense negative emotions attracted the nearby memory zone memes. <laughs> I see. But why aren't the other people around here scared? Unlike in the sweet dream, people here don't see memory zone memes as dangerous monsters. And even if they pose a threat, people can easily escape by forcing a wake-up call. But we can't just leave this man here. Can we take him somewhere safe? We can ask Jesse for help. I've gotten to know many locals while waiting for you guys. Everyone here is living a self-sufficient life. I don't know how to describe it, but this place feels like the real dreamscape. <gasps> Another treasure chest. Wait a minute. Yoink. Okay, well, let's go. Oh, wait, what's this collectible over here? All right, let's talk to Jesse. Evening, Jesse. Um, is it evening? Welcome, Miss March. Who might these be? These two are my friends. As for the man lying on the ground, uh, he's a scaredy cat who fainted from fright. <laughs> I see. Another poor guy who accidentally ended up here. I'll take care of him. There have been a lot of new faces lately. Things must be tough in the beautiful dream. Hmm. The few remaining havens of freedom and Asdana will soon face trouble. Do such things often happen here? Not really, but they're becoming more frequent now. Guess it's one of the signs of the sweet dreams collapse. Mm -hmm. This man has had quite the shock. Could you help me find a Halovian lady march? Her songs can heal mental wounds. A Halovian lady? That must be Robin. She's also here in Dreamflux Reef. Huh? Robin? But I thought she... Oh, right. If Firefly is here safe and sound, then it means Robin must be okay too. Misha is about to take us to her to find out what happened. But before that, let's meet up with Himiko. You were with her earlier, right? We met some stowaways in the residential area. Most of them came from neighboring star systems. I heard that places like Dreamflux Reef are scattered throughout the memory zone of Asdana, like islands in the ocean. They existed before the family arrived. I also heard that when Dreamflux Reef took shape, it was the center of all dreamscapes in Penacony. If that's true, it's no wonder there are so many similarities between this place and the sweet dream. Himeko must be gathering information. Let's hurry up and get going. Wonderful. This must be one of the Mystical 7 manhole covers. The manhole cover of preservation. Hmm, I wonder what Himiko is up to. This is where we split up. She can't be too far away. So that's how it is. I never imagined we'd gather the remaining details here. <laughs> to borrow Gallagher's catchphrase, what an unpredictable twist of fate. Himiko, here they are. Ah, oh, perfect timing. Now that everyone's here, I'd like to introduce everyone to Micah, who's partly in charge of the Land of the Exiles. Micah, these are my companions. It's a pleasure to meet the Nameless. You know us? I've been keeping an eye on you since the day you arrived in Penacony. We would have met under more appropriate circumstances if Dreamflux Reef hadn't been isolated from the Twelve Dreamscapes. <sighs> Please, allow me to formally introduce myself. I'm Micah. The Gravekeeper of Dreamflux Reef. Gravekeeper? Life in Dreamflux Reef is pretty liberating. Everyone here mostly keeps to themselves, without meddling in others' affairs. My daily task involves cleaning a few tombstones. You're too modest, Micah. When lost dream chasers stumble upon this place, you're the one who takes care of them, guiding them back to the sweet dream, or showing them how to survive the wild dream chaos. So, a uh, guardian of sorts. Hmm? Uh, were you talking to me, Mr. Yang? Mm hmm? Hmm? Huh? Hmm? On that note, Mr. Mika, uh, which tombstones are you referring to? We didn't come across any graveyard when we arrived. <laughs> They're actually just symbolic stones. But since you're curious, Mr. Yang, I'll take you there. I have a feeling you might find something of interest there. Uh, but before that, you have an important guest joining you. An important guest? Who could it be? This way, please. The roads here in Dreamflux Reef are a bit run down, so watch your step. <gasps> Robin!
Robin! Robin! Yeah! He is. <laughs> Everyone sang so wonderfully. It's not often that I tried this music style, but I've gained some valuable insights from it. Oh, I can't thank you enough, Robin. Well, these kids have made incredible progress in only a few days. It was nothing, Grace. I merely taught them how to sing. It was you who brought hope into their lives. Life must be quite difficult for them in reality, I imagine. That's right. Whenever it's time to say goodbye to these kids, they're reluctant to leave. But I've explored every corner of Dreamflux Reef, talked to everyone I met, and they all told me the same thing. This shattered dream is not worth clinging to. <laughs> it seems you truly are a child of the Harmony. Emma and Andy are orphans I took under my wing. Carol there, with her blind eyes, used to work at a nutrition center in the outer ring of Penacone. And as for Gary, he's been living with autism since he was a child. They're not old enough to enter the sweet dream managed by the family. If we compare people to birds, these kids are like fledglings with impaired wings. But in this dream, well, they can fly freely. Even if they stumble along the way, well, they're still relying on their own strength. And me, an old lady with no legs. Well, without this dream, I couldn't even walk toward them. I'm glad that you found a new life here in Penacony. It's just... Don't worry, Robin. Dreams have their significance, but they aren't everything. Both the children and I understand this. No matter how long we fly through this dream, we will one day return to reality. But you know what? Emma and Gary aren't plagued by their insecurities anymore. No, and Carol is learning how to cope with her blindness. And Andy is livelier than ever. Well, even I've become more optimistic. You see, in dreams, we learn how to live. Once we return to reality, we learn how to survive. And should our feathers be damaged, then we share our wings with one another. There's no need to covet an illusory sky in dreams, because we have the right and the ability to fly towards a broader horizon. It's a relief to see you safe and sound, Miss Robin. It's nice to see you all again, Astral Express crew. I heard my disappearance cause quite the commotion out there. I'm really sorry about that. Since you're here, can we assume that you're fully aware of the situation in Penacony? Ever since I returned to Penacony, my voice started to change until it gradually faded away. At first, I thought it was a temporary ailment. Perhaps due to having been away too long. I thought maybe it'd just take some time for my body to acclimate to the high concentration of Memoria as Donna. But now it seems... The root of the problem goes way beyond me. There are elements around me that don't align with the harmony. And losing my voice is just one of the signs of the Sweet Dream's collapse. The Sweet Dream's collapse? That Memo Keeper mentioned the same thing! So, it's real. While I was away from Penacony, the boundaries of the Twelve Dreamscapes kept expanding outward. But whenever I mentioned the anomalies in my dreams, all the family heads refused to talk about it. Only my brother was willing to respond. Later, I discovered the secret letters from the IPC Ambassador, which further convinced me that there are hidden secrets beneath the surface of Penacony. So, following the clues in the Oak family's dossiers, I found my way here. The land of the exiles. Concealed by the family under the guise of death. A dream within a dream, where Penacony's past is buried. Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, but the harmony in this place resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. It's regrettable. But the family has experienced betrayal. The traitor... or traitors... abandoned their original principles and... using the name of Harmony... exploited people's weaknesses to turn Penacony into the planet of festivities. 
trapping everyone in the illusion of the sweet dream. This is not the strong defending the weak, but rather the strong exploiting the weak. A world without equality won't ever be favored by the Harmony. And naturally, those voices blessed by them have lost the ability to sing. Oh. Could there be another force influencing the family's shift in philosophy, Miss Robin? Considering what happened with Acheron, it's difficult to conceive of another entity within the realm of the Harmony capable of influencing everyone. Unless a power surpassing that of an emanator is involved. <sighs> I'd heard about what happened to the Sienjo Alliance. But as far as I'm aware, the family hasn't faced any such external interventions. Who knows? Perhaps I've just been away too long and missed something. Regardless, I cannot accept my home is moving towards the very opposite of what the Harmony represents, while still claiming to uphold it. I must uncover the reason why Mikhail cut ties with the family, and who exactly it was who betrayed us all. Do you remember our arrangement, Mr. Micah? Well, here's my answer. I've decided to forgo my role, and never step foot on the Charmony Festival stage again. Makes sense. Talking in your sleep, Birdie? <laughs> Time to wake up. <sighs> huh? <laughs> Need a hand? I'm still alive? Yeah. Happy about that. Where is Robin? Tell me. Now. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing you'd ask. Don't worry, your sister is here, safe and sound. She's probably walking around the streets now. If I were you, I'd be more worried about myself. <laughs> After all, right in front of you is the guy who just stabbed you in the chest with a dagger. If you wanted to kill me, you wouldn't give me the chance to speak. Just tell me your demands. Lackey of the Watchmaker. So, you figured out who I am, huh? No wonder you had the guts to go against the Dream Master and the Four Families. Looks like I made the right choice. Choice? You are aware of my plan and see through my act. Time is running out, so let's drop the charades. I'm suggesting we cooperate. Cooperate? What makes you think I'd cooperate with you? Hmm. The fact that the famous Robin has chosen my side. Plus, some clues about a traitor and a bright future for Penacone. Any of that catch your interest? I find it hard to believe a man who's full of deception. Fine. You don't have to trust me. What you should trust is the sense of justice inside of you. <sighs> Show me Robin first. All right. As you wish. Here she is. Huh? What's your trick this time? <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, this lady will lead us to Robin, right? And the crew, too. There are too many people who you owe an explanation. <laughs> That'd be great. Please follow me, Honorable Oak Family Head. Now, all the actors are on the stage. This is the monument I mentioned earlier. The names inscribed on it should be familiar to all of you. Rosalina and Tiernan. When Penacone was known as a frontier prison, it was the trailblazers who connected it with the stars. They were the heroes who saved Astana, and their names deserve to be immortal. Are those tombstones of past Astral Express crew? Yeah, they are. Sorry for talking over this guy, by the way. Here, listen to his sexy voice again. However, Today, the planet of festivities is nothing but sweet dreams. That heavy piece of history is all a distant memory. Just like that prison. If their names are inscribed here, then that means... According to Micah, they died long ago. Rosalina was killed during the War of Independence. She ventured alone into the heart of the star system to investigate the flow of Memoria, but she never returned. Tiernan was a skilled gunslinger, strong and reliable. He led the people through countless battles, 
but he didn't live long enough to witness the arrival of true peace. In the decade following the war, Pentagoni faced challenges internal and external. To protect Asdana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lampmoth family to explore beyond the system, only to be surrounded and wiped out by the swarm. Though I had expected as much, the tales of these heroes truly are sorrowful. True to the title of Trailblazer, they spent their lives venturing into the unknown. But what about this tablet? There are no names carved on it. When Dreamflux Reef was created, its owner was still alive. However, he insisted on erecting a monument for himself, saying that it will happen someday. Here we meet again. Everyone from the Astral Express. Robin. This all is slowly making sense to me now. We are in dreams. We truly never die. Firefly's not really dead. And Robin's not really dead. Uh, Robin, after she got, like, you know, stabbed, went to go investigate on her own to see what was up with Pentacony. And now, we're here in the actual dreamscape. From what, for, okay, from my understanding, this is the actual true dreamscape where, you know, the weak defend... Oh, you know, the strong defend the weak in this place. But in the Sweet Dreams, that's kind of like being mishmashed around to the point where the strong are exploiting the weak. So yeah, this is all making sense. So no wonder why Robin is um, more talkative in this place rather than in Pentacony. And it makes sense for Robin for her not to go onto the Charmini stage ever again. Because, you know, we all know that the... Harmony and the sweet dreamscapes that we see is slowly dissipating and that sweet dreamscape is di uh, collapsing Whilst this is like being sucked by a black hole back over there slowly But this place is kind of like standing strong, but it's kind of hidden away from by the family and Galagar takes care of the Monster that we keep seeing that we keep fighting <laughs> It's pretty funny. All right, let's go That's my take on this by the way. All right, here you go I promised to give the siblings some privacy, so let's talk about our business first. What do you say? That sounds sensible enough. Since you went through the trouble of gathering the family head, the crew, and the Stellaron hunters, I'm guessing you have something important to say, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, is it that obvious? The look on your face is practically screaming, I'm the one behind all this. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Yang. It is indeed time to come clean on everything. The siblings already know what they need to, and they've made their choice. But you, Nameless, arrived a bit late. So it's only fair that I answer your questions. Before we begin, let me reintroduce myself. I'm the founder of Dreamflux Reef, the deputy of the Watchmaker, and... The one who sent out that invitation. As Gallagher, the history fictionologist, I humbly extend my greetings to you all. History fictionologist? So what, everything you told us was made up? Well, don't worry. Almost everything I shared was true. Well, except for the part about the family accepting me back. I double-checked with Micah. And everything he said about the family, the Watchmaker, and Mikhail is true. Thank you for your understanding. Now let's get down to business. I'm sure you're all wondering why I went through the trouble of setting up this battle for the legacy. Inviting different factions, and stirring up a ruckus all over Pentacony. Well, it all boils down to something very familiar to all of you. The Stellaron. The Stellaron? But how is that possible? Pentaconi is a free-flowing interstellar hub. There are no signs of contamination whatsoever. You're totally correct. So, care to take a guess at what that means? <laughs> how keen. Well, what should I say? I expected nothing less from the person here who is the most familiar with Stellarons. The sweet dream doesn't come out of thin air. 
If you think of the memory zone as the sea, creating the land of the dreams is like filling that wild ocean with earth to make an island. To achieve this feat, without the help of an emanator of remembrance or enigmata, the only way is to use a Stellaron. And that's not something you can achieve with a simple wish. It requires vast quantities of knowledge, time, and manpower. I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. In Azdana, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster. Uh, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster? It all started a long time ago. Back when the Watchmaker and his crew liberated the Frontier Prison. They faced countless challenges as they began building Penacone from the ground up. That's when the idea of using the Stellaron came into play. The Stellaron first entered the Azdana system during the war. The Nameless warned everyone against the folly of attempting to tamper with such a power, and most heeded their words. But there are always people in the shadows with ulterior motives. This whole situation, honestly, I'm taking a pause in the dialogue. This whole situation, by the way, I'm taking it all in. This whole situation here is more catastrophic than I thought, more concerning than I thought. Oh my gosh. Continuing. The turning point came after Tiernan's death. With two of the Nameless gone, the Watchmaker had to go to the front lines. It was at that moment his rivals saw an opportunity. By the time a representative from the Montour system's family arrived at the Watchmaker's call, the Stellaron had already been activated and was seeping into the primordial synesthesia dreamscape. And I suppose the family happened to possess the knowledge to seal the Stellaron? Not just that. They knew far more about the Stellaron than the average person. They helped Mikhail swiftly quell the civil unrest and played a part in building Penacone under the disguise of the Harmony. Those three eras were known as the Age of Dreaming. The Watchmaker, who had been left in the dark, sent out invitations across the universe, spreading the hype around the land of the dreams. Then, how did they turn against each other? Remember the island in the ocean metaphor? The truth is, the Stellaron was never truly sealed. It existed in a different form within the dreamscape. Think about this. What would it cost to create and maintain such a lavish dreamland? It's people's lives. The opulent dream is built upon the decay of spirits, with a toxic elixir called pleasure flowing through the dreamscape. It tempts people to indulge in the dreamscape, and gradually their minds succumb, becoming nourishment for the sweet dream. Oh. Oh god. I mean, I'm pretty sure ev when everyone looked at the Panacone at first, or played through Panacone for the first time, I'm pretty sure everyone agreed, something's up about this place and I do not trust it at all. There cannot be this many pleasures. And now that 2.2 has came out, this is totally confirmed. Like, there's no denying evidence, honestly, guys. Like, if you guys are trying to say, oh, but Panacone's still great, you guys are drinking too much, so glad. Confusion, laziness, and cowardice. Weaknesses that plague humanity were magnified and nourished by the family. Panacone became a new kind of prison, even more impenetrable than the previous one. Sadly, we realized this far too late. By then, the family had a firm grip on Panacone, swiftly quelling any opposition that arose. At my wit's end, I had to use the power of the Enigmata and sought refuge in this chaotic realm. Over the years, I created a meme within this dream for our use. Mm. Dormancy. That's its real name. We exploited a loophole. You see, regular people can't fall asleep again while they are inside the dreamscape. So this is the true meaning of the impossible. You sent out invitations in the Watchmaker's name to find forces capable of resolving the Stellaron disaster, and draw them into Penacone to uncover the truth. It's not just that. Above all, I wanted to see what happens when the major factions engage in a struggle for the legacy. Since this is the Watchmaker's first announcement in decades, the traitor within the family is bound to reveal themselves. 
So, the legacy is just a facade. Hmm. If you want to consider the Stellaron as the legacy, I'm totally fine with that. If that's the case, where is the Stellaron now? That's a question for Mr. Wings. The Stellaron is still under the family's control, and as the head of the Oak family, I'm sure he holds all the answers. Okay, Sunday, we need answers. Get the... Wait, there's a treasure chest over there, though. Okay, Sunday, I need answers. Are you done talking? So, will you tell us where the Stellaron is? <laughs> it is the Panacone Grand Theater itself. As I suspected, it's the embodiment of the family. The edifice that first materialized within the Sweet Dream. That's what turned Panacone into its current state. As for the person who employed its power, it is in fact Mr. Gopherwood, the current Dream Master. Well, that was easier than I thought. Did you conduct your own investigation already? Correct. When I was trying to track down the person who murdered my sister, apart from you, Gopherwood was my second suspect. Confronting me first turned out to be a smart move on your part. I didn't have other options. The Dream Master has been elusive, and even the heads of the families can hardly get an audience with him. Moreover, Mr. Gopherwood has been kind to my sister and me. And I didn't want it all to end like this. What do you mean by that? To be honest, my brother and I are also victims of the cancer of all worlds. We grew up as orphans, and were adopted by the family when they came to help. But I can't just stand by and watch Mr. Gopherwood become an enemy of the Harmony. I won't use my voice to support an evil cause. I won't step on that stage and sing. No matter who the traitor is, or what orders they give me. I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself. Or the paradise in our dreams. Indeed. For the paradise in our dreams. As the head of the Oak family, I'm responsible for ensuring Panacone's promising future. Robin and I will head into the sweet dream and confront the Dream Master. And if it turns out that the family has truly strayed from the Harmony, I'll fight alongside you. We'll put the Charmony Festival on hold and make sure Mr. Gopherwood pays for his blood debt. The enemies you are about to face aren't like this old dog here who can barely even bark. Since our interests are aligned, why don't we team up? Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a shot at success. We have always been following in the footsteps of our nameless predecessors. And there's no reason to stop now. <laughs> yeah, we nameless won't back down from a challenge. Isn't that right, Mr. Trailblazer? Ain't nothing we fear no more. We'd win. Uh, that line actually makes me a bit nervous. Rest assured, sitting on the sidelines isn't in our nature. Mr. Sunday, Miss Robin, I'm willing to accompany you on behalf of the Astral Express. Having a third party present should help with negotiations. And could make all the difference if things get ugly. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you all very much. The Charmony Festival is about to start, and time is against us. We must hasten. Everyone, let's gather over here. We still need to make some preparations. I may have been quick to step up to the plate, but confronting the Dream Master could be a very dangerous affair. Uh-huh. Even you're saying that, Mr. Yang? Uh, how powerful is that Dream Master? He's the leader of the families of Penacone, and he has the entire power of the Harmony behind him. Not to mention the Stellaron in his possession. We must proceed with great caution. Maybe you can just stay behind this time, Mr. Yang? No, that won't do. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. Although, I can't quite put my finger on it. I have to make sure he won't turn against us when things start to get dicey. You're still carrying the keepsake the IPC envoy gave you, right? 
May I borrow it for a moment? Huh. I knew it. As I suspected, this chip Venturine gave to you is actually a miniature transmitter. If I'm right, he intends to use it to track your location or contact you when needed. As it so happens, this may actually be a- A Venturine? Is he still alive? And what does he have to do with our mission to confront the Dream Master? Remember what I said earlier? Working with the IPC is a way to keep the family in check. If negotiations go south and the family show their true colors by going after the Stellaron, I'll use this transmitter to send a message to the IPC. It'll be just the opportunity the IPC ambassador was hoping for. The only question mark in all of this is Venturine's current status. But the IPC is always listening, especially senior strategic investment department heads like him. Getting the message across shouldn't be a problem. Good luck to you, Welt. Well, you take care too. If anything goes wrong, don't worry about me. Just make sure to seal the Stellaron. Spoken like a true hero. Even if the Dream Master is innocent, the family's corruption runs deep. I won't make the same mistake Mikhail did. Let's wish him the best of luck. Don't you have something else to tell us, Gallagher? Why would you say so? Before we departed, the Conductor asked us to inquire about the three Nameless in Penacony. We've already collected intel about Rosalina and Tiernan, so the only one left is Legwork, if I'm not mistaken. We've already met him somewhere, haven't we? Hmm. It's not enough to say meet. But the answer is pretty obvious. After all, I've hinted at it in quite an evident way. I've been watching over you ever since I received the reply from the Astral Express. And I've seen the great effort you all put into linking different realms together across the cosmos. And now, after getting this far all in one piece, you have true- Miss Himiko, were you the one who repaired the Express and got it sailing through the cosmos again? Yes. And you two, young Nameless, you have very interesting life stories and extraordinary skills. Uh, I don't know much about my life story, but I do have extraordinary skills. <laughs> You're full of energy. Please send my regards to the conductor, Pom Pom. Please let them know that their friend had fond memories from his time aboard the Express, which he reminisced on every time he had a good drink. As for the last Nameless, he embarked, disembarked, and embarked again, traveling in a great circle, ending up back where he started. On his deathbed, he told me to find the Astral Express and deliver an invitation to the future Nameless. He left behind a special gift, a true legacy, something that belongs only to the successors of the Trailblaze. Come with me. Now, it's the time to reveal it. Oh shoot, let's check it out. You know what? I've been recording long enough. Why don't we just end the episode here? Yeah, that's right. I'm doing this to you guys. But that's where we're going to leave it off for today's episode of Honkai Star Rail. I hope you guys enjoyed. And yes, I know I'm literally like cock blocking you from like uh, seeing the next part of this and the old reveal, but this at least gets you guys some initiative or intentive to watch my next video. Plus, I kind of, you know, this is a really good way. What, you wouldn't expect me to do a cliffhanger here? I would have done a cliffhanger at some point during the story. I just needed to find a good excuse to do this. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I know you guys are going to unsubscribe right now. Please don't unsubscribe. Please. Anyways, like I said before, I hope you guys enjoyed. And remember to stay chill and stay happy. I'll see you guys soon. Later. Also, Robin, in my opinion, really cute. I, I really like her, alright? Even my girlfriend agrees.